Tokyo, March 1962. Is he married? Akiko asked. Her eyes brightened with anticipation. Yes, he's married, and his wife is expecting in a few months. Noah answered, almost flattering, flattening his voice. I want to know more about your family. Come on, she pleaded. Noah got up to get dressed. She couldn't help it. Akiko was training to be a sociologist. She collected pieces of data, and her lover was her favorite puzzle. Yet, the more she inquired, the more reticent he grew. When he answered her in his pity manner, pithy manner, she had a habit of saying, So? As if the facts of his life were something marvelous to behold. Everything about him was fascinating to her. But Noah didn't want to be fascinating. He wanted just to be with her. He didn't mind when she turned her headlights on strangers. It was far more interesting to hear her attempts at demystifying others. He was Akiko's first Korean lover. In bed, she wanted him to speak Korean. How do you say pretty? She asked just a few hours before. Yepuda. Such a simple word felt strange in his mouth when he'd said it to her. Akiko was stunning. Pretty wouldn't suffice in describing her beauty. Arumdapta, he said, he should have said, but Noah didn't. She was an excellent social scientist not to have asked for the Korean word for love because he would have no doubt revealed his hesitation in the translation. Not wishing to be a specimen under her glass, Noah didn't talk about his mother, who had peddled kimchi and later confections so he could go to school, or his father, who died from harsh imprisonment during the colonial era. These aspects of his biography had happened a long time ago, as far as he was concerned. He wasn't ashamed of his past, it wasn't that. He resented her curious curiosity. Akiko was a Japanese girl from an upper-class family who had grown up in Minami Azabu. Her father owned a trading company and her mother played tennis with ex expatriates in the private club. Akiko adored rough sex, foreign books, and talking. She had pursued him, and Noah, who had never had a serious girlfriend before, did not know what to make of her. Come back to me, she said flirtatiously, fingering her white cotton top. Noah retreated to the futon. After making love between classes, they had been lolling in Noah's rented room, an exceptionally large living space for a university student with two square windows that led in the morning light and immense floor space for a double futon and a fur furry beige rug. Thick piles of novels covered his large pine desk, Dickens, Tolstoy, Balzac, and Hugo. The fancy electric lamp with a green glass shade was off. Noah couldn't have conceived of anything as nice as this room and could not believe his luck at the incredibly low rent. Hansu's friend was the landlord, and it had come furnished with new elegant things, ideal for a student studying literature and English. Noah had had to bring only his clothes packed in his father's suitcase. Akiko claimed that none of the other students lived in a place as nice even if they lived at home in Tokyo. She lived in a beautiful apartment with her family in Minami Az Azabu, but in a room half the size of this, of his. She spent all her free time between classes at his place. Her things were on his desk, in his bathroom, and in his closet. The commonplace idea that girls were neater than boys was not true.